activate interlocks. Dynatherms connected. Mega thrusters are go. <laughs> Let's go, Voltron Force. And I'll form the head. <laughs> uh, before I go any further, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. I know this show's been out for a little bit, but spoilers. You've been warned. You've been warned. You have been warned. I said that three times to emphasize, so don't blame us. Yes, also spoilers. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... Spoilers! And this is our thoughts on... Voltron, Legendary Defender. In case you can't tell, we've been watching Voltron. Yes. <laughs> and it is good. Oh, they did such a great job of bringing this show back. Can we, like, get them to get together with the original team from the remake or redo of Thundercats so we can get that going again? Because that kind of left in an odd spot. Someone needs to buy that from Cartoon Network. We also, I was going to say, this team needs to get with Nickelodeon, uh, needs to buy stuff from Nickelodeon. But apparently the team just left Nickelodeon and they're now doing their own thing called Voltron Force. Or not Voltron Force, that was a terrible version. Voltron the Legendary Defender. <laughs> So yeah, let's just be happy that the, the team has found a better home and they're putting out some nice stuff. Quite. Very nice stuff. There is so much good stuff. Released as 11 episodes, but technically there's 13 because episode 1, 2, and 3 are released as one chunk. Just er They did everything right. <laughs> Making Pidge a girl, leaving hints that she was a girl the entire time. I didn't suspect a thing. Uh, well, I suspected something, but not that Pidge was a girl. <laughs> I had my own theories, and Gender Swap wasn't one of them because Pidge was male in the original. Therefore, Pidge would be male in the remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Princess Alora. Oh, my God. They did such a good job of improving her character. So much better. Shapeshifting. That's a new one. <laughs> I also like how she answered all three of the questions. No, only one color. And <laughs> uh, also, she's either it was the fact that she shapeshifted or that she's super strong all the time because, damn, I know I pretty much jumped to the end of the series, but I'm just putting all the cool stuff that they did in this, like the fact that Alora is like really freaking cool. She goes through a nice character arc. We got Pidge who goes through a nice character arc. We got a lot of backstory on Pidge and Alora. We want, we want more on them, of course. We got all the cool characters. There's a theory going around that Keith is actually part Galra because of how his hand got damaged, the way it looked, and how his hand also seems to activate locks that only hands of the robots seem to open. Um, so... Back up a step, you're getting your characters mixed up. The theory is that Keith is part Golra, and now you're talking about the hand... Oh, never mind. Edit this out. I'm following now. <laughs> I was thinking of Shiro's arm. <laughs> uh, also, I have my own pet theory that eventually Shiro's arm will get cut off, because it's actually the reason that they're being tracked, because... Who wouldn't put a tracking device into their slaves, right? Especially when you have a handy mechanical device right there. I've been waiting for them to hack him. Yeah, I'm like, either they're going to hack the arm or they're going to... I don't think they're going to hack him, really? But maybe they might do something where his arm will start hacking stuff around him. I don't know. Also, speaking of hacking, I know Pidge is good in everything, but why are you touching the lions? <laughs> Also, there's the classic trope of, everyone speaks the same language. <laughs> yes, but you know, it is technically a children's show. So I was going to give a pass on everyone speaks the same language. And also that 10,000 years later, the language hadn't changed. So Allura and the Voltron Force and the Galra can still all speak the same language. Mm-hmm. Uh, either it's the same language or, dang, boy, they got some really good automatic translators in that time period. So automatic, you don't even know they're there. <laughs> Babelfish, anyone? Uh, <laughs> just the animation is really nice. They do a really good job of blending the 2D with the 3D to the point where I don't even notice it if I'm not paying attention. 
because they actually use a lot of 3D and uh, 2D, uh, 3D processing where the um, backgrounds and the um, sceneries shift and tilt a little bit in the uh, on the 3D plane, but they're actually 2D drawings to interact with the lines better and just a bunch of really cool stuff. The a technical thing I've been thinking about lately is okay, so the ship can fly horizontally and land vertically. Does everything inside the ship rotate, or is it because they're in space and they have artificial gravity that they don't have to worry about that? So technically, everyone's standing straight up, even though they're horizontal, even though the ship's horizontal, or <laughs> does everything like rotate, or do the ceilings become floors, or I should say walls become floors? <laughs> Well, nothing ever seems to look different compared to when they were grounded on Eris and when they're flying, so I vote for artificial gravity because, you know, the Altaian technology was so incredibly advanced 10,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Another theory that's been popping around in my head recently is I think the lions are powered by quintessence. Well, I hope there's a better way to get it than what the Galra are doing then. Yeah, I think they're actually powered by it because I think they're giving us hints in the lion's design. They have this kind of pure quintessence that's more of a blue color compared to the yellow color or the red color that the Galra are using. And the lions have blue highlights on certain parts of their body. Also, they could just be powered by Balmera crystals because the crystals gifted by the Balmera are also blue. Mm -hmm. But I was also thinking it would be interesting if they were powered by quintessence, because that would explain how they can transform and morph a little bit. Because quintessence seem to be, seems to be powerful enough to be able to morph things and change things. Like the fact that it healed Keith's hand. Mm -hmm. Also, if you notice, even though we like the characters, well, Amber's a little bit light on Lance right now. <laughs> and if you notice, we haven't really been talking about Hunk or Lance. And that's because they didn't really get much backstory they got character development but not really much backstory in these first 11 episodes yeah so we don't really have the background but we get some nice character development and see lux and i split up the duties he rewatched legendary defender and i rewatched some of defenders of the universe so just based on the first few episodes ignoring all the callbacks that normal average memory would connect between the two series mm -hmm. that's another nice thing is they did a nice job of slowly integrating and subtly integrating callbacks like okay i'll be the head settling the lions on top of the pyramid and also activate interlocks dinotherms connected yes though that was done with the ship rather than the lions also koran's love of tradition Hmm. I mean, there's no real, air quotes, character development in the 1984 Voltron. But aspects that could be considered character traits have been brought forward to the reboot. When Koran gives the uniforms to the space explorers, he talks about how they're traditional. Hmm. Modern Koran, all about tradition. Hunk, obsessed with food. One of the first things he says after they crash land on planet Eris is, how about some food? Or is there a space burger joint around here? <laughs> oh, the 80s. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lance has very few lines in the first few episodes, but most of them are what would be for the 80s snarky comments. <laughs> oh. Fitting for Lance. Hidge goes out on his own like an idiot to do something he feels is right. Hmm. Hi, Katie. <laughs> but speaking of traditional, also reminded me of the, the new series, how when they first entered the castle, how the lights turned on like they were torches lighting automatically. They all kind of had a slightly <laughs> sound, like when torches go <laughs> inside of animations that have magic and the candles light on their own. I like how they did that, and the castle still feels like a castle, even though it's a modern design. So that's really nice. I like those subtleties and the fact that they're using the words paladin, and it kind of hints back to castles, chivalry, knights, paladins, you know, stuff like that. Yes, and there are other actual parallels, though Hunk's story turns out better 
in the modern version with him rescuing the Balmeran slaves. In the original series, Hunk has some stuff going on with a rescued slave, and that turns out to be a trick. Allura is tricked by a white lion who she believes is the spirit of her father. Modern Allura is tricked by the corrupted file of her father's memory. Hmm. And I'm just going to say it here and now because I am sure someone's complaining about it. Yes, the pilots have the wrong lions. It doesn't matter. Shut up. <laughs> I actually prefer the New Order, especially since all their suits match up with their lion colors. <laughs> yes. That actually bugged me in the original series. It's like... Why is he piloting the black lion? And why is the black pilot piloting the blue lion? And <laughs> and why is the blue pilot piloting the red lion? Mm -hmm. And why does the princess have to wear pink? Mm -hmm. Though I do like the outfit she has in the new series. How it has pink accents to give the feel back to the original series. But still it's predominantly uh, grays and blues. Yes, much nicer. And while we're nitpicking over lions... Let's not forget that in the original series, Keith was initially piloting the green lion because Pidge was missing and they didn't have the key for the black lion yet. And there was absolutely no discussion over who gets what lion. Constantly reused stock footage always shows Keith entering the first port. <laughs> you also mentioned outside of this episode that they reused a lot of footage in the initial episodes. Yes, I know that anime is known for recycled footage, but it's usually like a transformation sequence. But every time they were showing the robot troops, yes, they had to be robots so we could keep more of the violence, um, attacking planet Eris, and it's Eris, not Altea, they used the same footage. It was the same soldiers running along the same path, firing the same weapons, blowing up the same rocks. The same snakes coming out. Why snakes? I need to go watch <laughs> Go Lion and figure out why snakes. <laughs> I need to watch Go Lion, period. I've never seen it. <laughs> also, every scene of the Galaxy Garrison, every time someone spoke, it was the same footage for that character. Uh, speaking of speaking, the voice acting is really good in the new series and the old series. Oh my god, Pidge. <laughs> uh, mostly everyone. And I think that might be one reason that Sven is now Chiro. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. That, that f foreign accent, just, no. No, and I, I liked Sven as a kid. And just looking back at the footage now as an adult, it's like, Wow, they managed to keep in a few prayers for the dead, and they changed Hunk's prayer for a prayer that they safely get off of Planet Doom. And, oh, look at Spin's outfit. He was probably some sort of martial arts expert. Wow, right over my head. I know I keep saying this, but they did such a good job on this new series. <laughs> uh, I loved how when me and you were watching it together, we're like, one more episode. <laughs> yeah, w which was rather risky, because I did have work the next day, like, every single day. Yeah, we're like... We need to go to bed. It's just maybe one more. Okay, oh, just one more. <laughs> I think we we're also spurred on by the fact that there was really only eleven episodes. Yeah, so I was like, oh yeah, we we can finish this. We can complete something. <laughs> so are you done with your comparisons between the old series and the new series? And if you are, do you have any nitpicks for the new series? <laughs> I always have nitpicks, but I wasn't entirely done with comparisons, because in the 1984 Voltron, I can't say original for something that was spliced together from two series and recrafted into something else, sorry. The team of space explorers who became the Voltron Force were all highly trained, so we have a contrast there, where... The modern team is mostly students, with the exception of Shiro. Keith was team leader. That's why he got the Black Lion. And this is going back to similarities again. Allura's closeness with the space mice and Pidge kind of being second in having interactions with them. Because in the 1984 Voltron, Pidge sees the space mice several times before they end up tracking the space mice down to get the Black Lion's key from them. 
Hmm. But the modern version is a much better story of, oh, they were in the chamber with me. We seem to have some sort of link now compared to, it was lonely being an only child. The mice used to entertain me. Okay, Cinderella. I just love the fact that the new series was done by the Legend of Korra team. That is just so awesome. You can see it in the way certain characters are developed and stuff like that. Because mentally, I couldn't help it, but it was like, that character's a lot like Sokka. And that character's like this. Well, that character's actually a blend between Sokka and this character. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and we all know that Sokka was featured prominently in Legend of Korra. And Avatar The Last Airbender. Same team. <laughs> Everyone knows that, so I... I Moving on. <laughs> no, but it's nice that they're in a place where they have room to work, because there were a lot of issues with the Korra series, and the team kind of got a lot of the blame for that. Yeah, I, I blame Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Why'd they have to get Miraculous Ladybug? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great series. I really like that series. I need to do a video on it sometime. <laughs> I have to finish watching it first. Okay, back to Voltron. <laughs> now, nitpicks. Um, still on the original, the, the Space Explorers are originally called the Space Explorers. Koran dubs them the Voltron Force. Not 30 seconds later, we cut to King Zarkon, who then immediately refers to them as the Voltron Force. Also, repetitiveness. Everything has to be said by both the good guys and the bad guys. Oh, the space explorers have escaped and crash landed on planet Eris. Oh, they have four of the five lions, but they haven't found the fifth key. Both sides had to say everything. And if we cut back to the galaxy garrison, they also had to say the same thing. If you took out all that repetitiveness, the four episodes I watched probably could have been cut down to a half hour. <laughs> and at the same time, everything moved incredibly fast because... When they first meet Koran, he goes, we are wary of strangers, like, get out of here. And then they're like, oh, let us show you this very secret special room and introduce <laughs> you to the crown princess. Well, and speaking of fast, the pacing did feel a bit quick in the new series, too. And I think it's because they crammed a lot into 11 episodes. <laughs> they really did. So I was going to leave pacing out of my nitpicking. I was going to pick on Shiro's convenient amnesia. He only remembers things when we need to know them or we need him distracted for um, a story moment. Convenience, yes. Like the lions and they go, oh yeah, I have this toy that you didn't find out until now. <laughs> yeah, because we really haven't had enough downtime for me to just show you stuff. So I'm only showing you stuff when you really need it. So here's the blazing sword. Here's this gun weapon. And you guys haven't needed the other stuff yet, so we're not going to show it to you yet. And eventually you're going to need the weapon for the black line and you're going to be hosed because you don't have the black paladin's bell yard. Mm -hmm. Which is much nicer, I think, than the little laser guns that the Voltron Force gets in the 1984 version. It's much more personalized, even though they all basically look the same. It's kind of like a cross between... Season 1 Power Rangers having the guns and having the individual weapons. Because you have something that basically works the same for everyone, yet is actually different. Also, 10,000 year old technology is apparently pretty damn state of the art. Why is it not totally archaic and, you know, the Golra millions of years ahead of them? And do all Golra ships run their sentries on the exact same time? Because I'm pretty sure that the ship Shiro originally escaped from couldn't be the same one that they were infiltrating at that point where he was timing out the patrols. Also, we haven't gotten to the awesomeness of the tribal people of Planet Eris. Because <laughs> that was fun. Also, another parallel of the castle being open to celebrants and someone sneaking in and planting a bomb deep within the castle. Because... Yeah, that happened in 1984 Voltron. I do like the, you do not accept the sorry dance? Okay, let's sacrifice some people. <laughs> no, 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 I accept the dance. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was well played. Mm-hmm. No, Voltron wins. Oh, okay. 
thank you for that wonderful play. <laughs> <laughs> and all the neat stuff on the Balmera, but I was waiting basically since Hunk and Koran got to the Balmera for someone to do the ritual to share energy back with the Balmera. I'm like, I waited like three episodes for that. Well, Koran kind of did that when he asked the Balmera to release the crystal that they were after. Yes, but I kept waiting for the big one that Allura did at the end. I'm like, Koran should be able to do at least a little bit of that, you know, especially with how much he knows about Balmeras. And someone please explain to me how one princess, so a single sentient life form, and one ship, which is powered by a single crystal, which was gifted from the creature that you're trying to save. Therefore, it must be less powerful than the creature because the creature produces multiple crystals like that. Can produce enough energy in this sharing ritual to completely save the Balmera. Plot convenience. Yes, but I do like that she was actually weakened afterwards and that you have in the follow-up episode that she should still be resting because she's exhausted from the ritual. Actions have consequences! Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm just glad we're, they already announced the second season, which will be coming out by my guesstimate sometime in December, based on the fact that the, uh, the comic book series are going to be doing to fill in the gap between this season and next season will actually end and release a basically an omnibus version of it on December. So that'd be the perfect time to release next set of episodes, which I don't know how many there are going to be. I am hoping for 26, but I have a feeling with the way they're doing series nowadays, we're going to get another 13. Hey, at least we're getting them. And with Netflix, they'll be released all at once, so we can binge watch again. Yep, and also knowing Netflix, we're probably already going to get at least another season, if not more. Mm-hmm. Because as long as they bring in subscriber numbers, which they've been doing, hey. So, any more nitpicks? Or what are your favorite parts of the series so far? Well, I really like all the character development we've had, along with the backstory. Which, of course, reminds me of nitpick. How did Pidge not immediately jump to the conclusion that Shiro hurt her brother to protect him? Yeah, I know, me and you instantly. Yeah! Duh! <laughs> Yeah, this person that I trust, that I know was friends with my brother before they left Earth, wouldn't have hurt my brother. Therefore, there had to be a reason. Yeah. And if you were that suspicious, why after, oh, yeah, I remember how it happened now, do you go to, I instantly forgive you? If you were that suspicious about it, then that should have carried over more. Also, Pidge, I know you're a genius. But it's been established that you guys can't read Golra or Altaian. How are you doing all this hacking? Or modifications to technology that should be so advanced that you're like, dude, I'm trying to use a screwdriver on this thing that's not even accepting a screwdriver. I'm a caveman compared to this technology. <laughs> yeah, but no, we can reprogram one of the sentry bots. We can add an invisibility cloak to the lion. We can download data from the downed Golra ship and extract enough information that you're willing to go search for your family based on it. Which means not only did you decrypt it, you also translated it. Because it's been established the Universal Translator apparently only works on speaking. Because there have been multiple instances of not being able to read Golra or Altaian, which has hindered the Voltron Force in being able to do something. Mm-hmm. So... Probably just start wrapping things up. What are your theories, since I've shared some of mine? <laughs> I haven't really gotten into theories. Uh, I think I'm pretty supportive of the Keith is part Golra theory, considering the way they escaped and Zarkon's comment of him fighting like a Golra. Also, that even though it's stated that you have to earn the Red Lion's respect, how much difficulty he had in getting the Red Lion to accept him. Though that kind of backfires on the theory that King Zarkon used to be the Black Lion's paladin. Not really. The Lions could have started mistrusting them after that because, like, ooh, he betrayed us. <laughs> All right, case in point. So those theories aren't completely incompatible. Shiro, as the pilot wearing the black uniform, 
even though he's piloting the black line and therefore should be safe, is key to being the one to fall because he's the one who holds the team together. Also, yeah, uniform. Because that was Sven's color. And Sven lost. But I would really love for Allura not to become a pilot because they gave her the ship to pilot and that's actually really awesome. So I don't really need her to be a member of the Voltron Force to prove that she's awesome. She's actually already proved that really nicely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, I'm sure that something is going to happen either to her or the lions based on that little tidbit that Koran gave us that her life force is connected to the lions. So one or the other is going to fail and the other is going to be in trouble. There's also the fact that at the end of the season, everyone got split up. <laughs> yes. So Allura can probably find the other lions because she is connected to them. But if she is incapacitated or if the castle ship is too damaged, she's not going to be able to go to them. And they're going to have to struggle their way back to finding each other, which is going to make for some interesting character development. Because you're different when you're by yourself than when you're around others. And let's not forget what those... Um, Nasty little thieves said about, you know, I really hoped you do defeat Zarkon. You know, I ended up like this because I used to fight against him. Foreshadowing. All right, and this is probably the longest recording we have done since Bravely Default. So there's probably nobody still listening. <laughs> so we really should wrap things up so they can just look at the pretty picture. Well, my final thoughts in this series is awesome and I can't wait for the next season. It's so wicked, and it's cool, and it's well done. It's really great. A lot to nitpick, but name me something where you can't nitpick, and I'm sure I can find something wrong with it. Really looking forward to the next season. It's kind of like watching Sailor Moon Crystal and then going back and watching Sailor Moon. You're like, oh my god, it's the same, but it's different, and it's amazing. This is awesome. And this has been our thoughts on Voltron, Legendary Defender. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.